All right, so let's study a second theorem, which is even more profound than the intermediate value theorem. So what we're studying in this video is called the mean value theorem. So again, we'll start by watching the race of the same bolt again, because it's just so amazing that I can't stop watching it. So let's watch the show. This is just incredible. Okay, so what is the mean value theorem saying? So let's start again by drawing the graph of the position function of a sine bolt as a function of time. So it will look like something like that. Right. Now, one thing we can calculate as well is a sine bolt's average velocity. Right, the average velocity of a sine bolt is going to be given by the uh, the, the, the distance that he uh, ran through. So 100 meters divided by the time, which was 9.58 seconds. And if you calculate that, you get something like 10.44 meters per second. So this is a science average velocity over this 100 meter race. Now what the mean value theorem is saying is that there must be a time somewhere between 0 and 9.58 seconds at which a same bolt's instantaneous velocity was exactly equal to its average, to his average velocity of, should be his, sorry, to his average velocity of 10.44 meters per second. Now, if you think about it physically, that makes sense, right? If uh, the same ball was going at a constant velocity, then he would have been at 10.44 meters per second the whole time, between 0 and 9.58 seconds. But of course, that can't be true. That's impossible because he started at zero velocity. He started from rest. So he, has, he had to accelerate. So that means that at least for a certain time period uh, during the time interval, he was going slower than 10.44 meters per second. But because this is the average velocity, that means that he must also have been faster for a certain period of time. So at a certain time, he must have gone through this particular velocity, right? Since he was going slower and faster, he must have somehow accelerated through the exact average velocity of 10.44 meters per second. So that makes sense from a physical point of view. Now we can understand it as well from a geometrical point of view, right? What this statement is saying, the average velocity, remember, is the slope of the secant line. So if I take these two points here, I can draw the secant line between these two points, and the slope of this line is exactly equal to the average velocity. Now what the statement is saying, the mean value theorem is saying that there must be a point C between in this case 0 and 9.58 such that the tangent line, that's what gives the instantaneous velocity, so the tangent line of the function at this point is parallel or has the same slope as the uh, secant line here. So in other words there must be a point where the instantaneous velocity is the same as the average velocity. If I look at this function here well, probably there's a point somewhere like here, I don't know, which has tangent line, which has exactly the same slope here. So the slope here would also be equal to the average velocity. So that would be, that is the statement of the mean value theorem. All right, so let me try to formalize that in a rigorous setting. So the exact statement is the following. So let f be a function that is continuous over the interval a to b. And now we also need to require that it's differentiable over the open interval a to b. Uh, we'll see in class why this is important. So what differentiable means here is that the derivative of the function exists for any point between a and b. Now the statement of the mean value theorem is that there exists a number c between a and b such that the derivative of the function at c is exactly equal to the difference quotient here, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now, why is that the same statement as I said in the previous slide? Well, this expression here is exactly the slope of the secant line through the points a, f of a, and b, f of b, while this is the slope of the tangent line at c. So what this complicated equation is saying is exactly what I said before. There exists a c such that the tangent line has exactly the same slope as the secant line between A and B. All right, so that's a really interesting uh, theorem. In fact, it's, it's, it leads to a, le a lot of really interesting results, and we'll use that quite a bit as well when we graph, uh, sketch the graph of functions. Now, the proof of this, this theorem is also interesting. 
So the proof requires something that we haven't seen yet, which is called the extreme value theorem. And this is the subject of the next video. So I will talk about the proof in class. For now, let's not worry about the proof of this theorem and just take it for granted, and we'll study this in class. Now, there's a few things I want to note here, uh, is that the, the point C here and it not, it doesn't have to be unique. So there may be more than one point such that uh, the, the, the derivative at these points is equal to the difference quotient. Uh, this, this is the same thing as for the uh, intermediate value theorem. So it's not saying there's a single point, but there is at least one point. Now, there's another thing I want to mention here. If it happens that f of a is equal to f of b, so that the function has the exact same value at both endpoints in b, then, well, f b minus f of a here which is equal to 0. So the statement now becomes the special case where, where the statement is that there exists a c uh, between a and b such that the derivative at c is 0. Now, this is known as Rowley's theorem. It's really just a special case of the mean value theorem. It's not a it's a, it, doesn't have, it shouldn't be a separate theorem, but it has a very interesting applications for sketching graphs of functions. All right, so let me give you an example of how, uh, well, not how we can use it, but an example of what the, this uh, theorem actually means uh, mathematically. So consider the following function, very simple function, f of x equals x squared. So it looks like this, nice parabola. Now pick your favorite interval between a and b. So let's say that a is somewhere here, b is going to be somewhere here. So a f of a is here and b f of b is somewhere like here. All right, so what is the statement of the theorem? So the state statement of the theorem is that there exists, so there is a c between a and b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So what does it mean in this particular context? So our function is just x squared. So the difference quotient here is really just b squared minus a squared b minus a. But this is just b minus a times b plus a to b minus a. So I can cancel the b minus a, and I get b plus a. And also I can calculate that f prime of my function here is just equal to 2x. So what I get is that the statement of the mean value theorem here becomes the statement that there exists a c such that 2c is equal to a plus b. Or in other words, what we get is that this particular point c in this case will be precisely the midpoint between a and b. Now this is a very special case. That's because we're looking at the square function, which is very nice. And let's see geometrically whether that makes sense. So what we're saying is that if I draw the secant line here, there should be a point between A and B such that the tangent line is exactly the same slope as the secant line. And moreover, we just found that this point should be exactly half point between A and B, half distance between the two. Now looking at it, I could guess that it's going to be somewhere like here, where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. And this point should be precisely in, in the middle of A and B, which seems to make sense. Right, so that's consistent with uh, what we just found. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, uh, there's a lot of consequences to the mean value theorem, so we'll study some of them in classes. Some of them are, are really interesting and quite fundamental to calculus. But let me end this, this video with another interesting question. So suppose that I train like crazy, and I try to beat a same uh, Bolt's 100-meter record. So he thinks that I'm credible enough and decides to go on a duel. So we both start a race, just us two, start at the same time and go on for the record. And I've trained like a lot. I really trained a lot. And we managed to both finish the 100 meters at exactly the same record time of 9.58 seconds. Pretty amazing. Now the question is the following. Is it true that at a certain time during the race, both Hussein and myself had exactly the same velocity? That also sound pretty crazy, right? Of course, we didn't go to at exactly the same velocity for the whole race. He probably started a little faster than me, then I, I, I caught up and I went faster than him and so on. Now, what I'm saying is that there is a time during the race where we both had precisely the exact same velocity. Why should that be so? Well, you can think about it. We'll come back to that in class.